Problem 11. A square-shaped floor is covered with congruent square tiles. If, a to if the total number of tiles that lie on the two diagonals is 37, how many tiles cover the floor? Well, first, let's try to give ourselves a sub-example. Let's say I have a 3x3, um, three three, right? And I'll, I'll shade it in red here. So if I were to do this, I'll shade in red the, the diagonals. I have this. Oh, sorry. Uh, I need to cover the square up. Um, so let's cover that up. Right here. So if I were to paint in the the diagonals, right? That's the diagonal. That's the diagonal. That's the diagonal. So this is a three by three square, right? But then how many are di on the diagonal? Well, there's three. There's three cubes on the diagonal. Well, maybe this holds true for all of it. So let's continue. Let's continue with one, two, three, one, two, three. If I have this case, right? I'm not gonna shade it in. Um, or actually, I will. Right, I'll, let's close the boundary up. If I were to shade it this time with green, I have this box. Oops, sorry, I didn't close it. Yeah, paint is uh, kind of weird. But anyway, we have this. So if we color, right, color, color, color. Then we have four. This is a four by four square, right? Four by four square. And I have what? I have four on the diagonal. So a square cover floor is covered with congruent square tiles. So the total number of tiles aligned to two diagonals is 37. How many tiles cover the floor? Well, this is assuming that this is a one by one. And since the total number of tiles that lie on the two diagonals is 37, that means, for example, we're, we're including this and this as well, right? Or there's a chance that we are also covering like an even number of squares. We do not really know. So how do we determine it? Well, the total number of squares that lie on the two diagonals is 37. How many, how many total blocks are on the two diagonals? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 total. How many are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8. So what we can conclude is if, if the dimensions of the squares and even by even, we must have an even number of total tiles that lie on the two diagonals. But if it's an odd by odd case, then we have a, a odd number of total tiles that are on this two diagonals. So that means our square here must be, since we have a odd number, it has to be an odd even, an odd number of tiles, right? It's an odd by odd square. But how many tiles are there? Well, if I have, if I have, you know, five in total, then that means how do I get two to half? Well, it's five divided by two, right? Round down plus one. So likewise, this must give me the three total tiles, um, the three total tiles on both, on both, um, um, uh, on one of them. Right, on one of them. So if that's on one of them, then how do I get that? Well, that is just equal to the 5 over 2 to plus 1. So this must be 37 over 2 plus 1 from the same logic. So this must be equal to what? That's equal to 18 plus 1, which is 19. I must have 19 on one of the diagonals. And if I have 19 on one of the diagonals, then I have a 3 by 3 here. So that means I have a 19 by 19 square. And that must give 361. So that means that must be answer choice C. So that just goes to show the power of basically having a simpler example and then concluding stuff from the general, from the simpler examples, and then applying it to the larger example where we have this case right here. But nonetheless, the answer is choice C. Always give yourself simpler examples, conclude generalities, and then apply that generality to the larger scope of the question.